So in getting the most out of these drills, we've got hydraulics downforce on planters, which I, in my view is a wonderful thing. And I was kind of like, well, why can't we put hydraulics on these drills? So we did. And it's, it's amazing how much better this does. I mean, it exceeded my expectations. Because the problem, and I knew for quite some time, the problem with this OEM spring, it's so much worse than on the planters. On the planter, you've got a parallel link. And yeah, springs are not the same rate throughout their range, but between all the way, that parallel link all the way up and that parallel link all the way down, what's the difference in pressure? 10 or 20%? It's not, not huge. On this, opener the difference between all the way down it's zero versus all the way up it's seven or eight hundred pounds you know it goes from double to zero in a very short stretch i mean that planter the range of travel is like this on this opener the range of travel is about that much and it's optimum for about that much your fields are not tabletop level there's always a very slight undulation to them left over from the tillage days, maybe a little bit of erosion. You know, something is not quite all the same. And then you've got tracks from the combine, from the sprayer, whatever. It makes a little depression. Even if you think you're not making any depression, get a straight edge out there, a yardstick or something, lay across there. Yeah, there is a little bit of a depression. And it doesn't take much. This, when we are running you know pretty typical conditions we compress that coil spring two inches to get the pressure we need to run in long-term no-till two inches of expansion uh, you've got zero pressure and if it expands an inch you've got half so just when you needed it most down in that track because it's harder in the track just when you need the very most down pressure is now when you've got the very least so we end up with the spring set up, we crank the pressure up a lot. We've got excess pressure on three-fourths of the openers just to make the other fourth sort of work again. And so we end up stacking a whole bunch of frame weight on because we're, you know, we have terrible excess pressure on a bunch of the openers just to make the last few work. With, the, with hydraulics, it's the same throughout the length of stroke. If you set it at 500 pounds of pressure, it's 500 if it's fully extended, or, or you know, an eighth of an inch shy of fully extended, and it's 500 if you collapse it all the way. It's always the same, exactly the same. And it's just amazing how much better these openers work uh, once we got rid of that spring. And, you know, I've got people who have bought this system uh, in uh, and they, they just they rave about how good their stands are Now it's really noticeable in terraces you go up and over terraces because the the springs have such a little range of travel you have all these little skips on top of the terrace where openers came out of the ground in the process of going up and over you don't have those skips anymore with hydraulics uh, your, your ability to hug the terrain is so much better. You don't need as much frame weight, not nearly as much, because they're all the same. You're, you don't have excess pressure on half of them to make the other ones work. In hard, dry soils, we, on this drill, we left an OEM spring on the far, well, almost to the right-hand end, not quite the end. And it was hard and dry last fall, and Alan and I were both just really amazed at how much that the opener with the spring was jumping around. And the ones with hydraulics, just smooth. Uh, so that, with the spring system, even though it had max pressure on it, it couldn't stay in the ground. And so it starts riding out, and it's just doing this little bit of jumping all the time. Now. Yesterday when we ran it, it had rained enough, it was soft enough here, you really couldn't see it. It was very, very subtle. Um, but, you know, half the time we're seeding in kind of hard, dry conditions, and 
getting rid of that chatter. I mean, that chatter is just an indication the opener is not maintaining depth. I, just, I, I have a question, a couple of questions. I don't have this system on my drill. I'm intrigued by it. Um, one is, what's the difference in your uh, amount of travel, up and down, down travel, total travel? Uh, are these cylinders, whenever they're fully extended, longer? You know, significantly more travel? There's, uh, our cylinders allow the opener to go about one inch deeper, which means you lose about one inch of transport clearance in the center. Okay. And we might correct that, we might not. Some people kind of like that extra travel. Okay. On the upside... Like, for instance, when you go over a terrace at an angle and your back right side is wanting to ride up out, the extra stroke gives you more, yeah. more stroke for that. Yeah, we've got so more less, down stroke. Okay. And we've got full pressure at the end. Okay, given that it's running smoother, can you increase ground speed? Yes. And do the same job? Yes. Okay, significantly, you think? I think so. Okay. That makes it worth <laughs> quite a bit. And as far as upstroke, we've got more upstroke than what the spring has. The, those, the coils on the spring strike each other after you, as you fully compress it. We've got more up travel than what the spring has. So, or my badger mounts. Yeah. I can go over those a lot. Or better. those really pointy terraces where <laughs> yeah. the spring maxes out and it lifts the whole drill. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it all runs off a single remote. It, it works in conjunction with the rock shaft. The rock shaft has to be rotated fully over and then these pressure up. These are single action cylinders so we can't lift them. They're, they're down only. Uh, there's a sequencing valve in there to make all that stuff work right. Uh, this black vessel here, that's an accumulator. You only need an accumulator if you have terraces and you run, sometimes run only one rank of your drill. Otherwise, if you always run both ranks, we've got these cross flow hoses between the front and back rank. So if you're going, you know, going over a terrace at an angle, never a problem. But if you're going square over a terrace and you're collapsing all the cylinders, all that oil has to go somewhere. Well, going over a terrace, if the front rank is collapsed completely, usually the back rank is extending down. And in the reverse as it passes over, when the back rank is fully collapsed, the front rank is extending down. So basically the oil just flows back and forth between these ranks almost always. We don't have to worry about replenishing from the tractor super quick. But if you, a lot of us, uh, a lot of guys for soybeans and milo will run only one rank. And there, if you go square over the terrace with just one rank and you collapse all those cylinders, all that oil goes back to the tractor and we can't pump fast enough. Uh, I don't care, you can have 35, 40 gallon per minute remote, and we can't deliver oil fast enough. There will be 10 or 12 feet where the pressure drops off. It doesn't go to zero, but it drops several hundred pounds. So to fix that, we've got the accumulator, and now the, the needle never budges on the gauge. It's always just wherever you set it, it just doesn't matter how crazy you go over terraces, how fast, it's just always constant. What is the hydraulic flow requirement? Really not that much. Uh, it only takes eight gallons per minute to run this. Worst case scenario, like when you're raising and lowering, eight gallons per minute. The fan, by contrast, takes 25 to 30. So it's not that, that major. But when we need oil, we need it quick. And that's why one rank, you, gotta, you should have an accumulator. Or if you got tractor, an older tractor with you know, that only puts out 25 gallons per minute or less, you know, you might need an accumulator. You, you can certainly try it without. Uh, even just one, running one rank in the terraces, and it's still plants going over the terrace, but you do lose pressure for, you know, you don't have full pressure for 10 or 12 feet. And, you know, some of us are meticulous enough, we can't stand that, so that's why that accumulator's on there. We also have options, uh, and this is for both this drill or if you're running the OEM hydraulics, we have a uh, motorized control valve that screws into your valve block and it's electronically run, so you can put a switch in your cab and you can increase or down, decrease down pressure on the go with either our system or John Deere's. It's 
Uh, we've, we're also uh, now dealers for a Dawn system that will monitor downforce. Uh, again, doesn't matter what hydraulic, whether you're using hydraulic or OEM springs, you can monitor downforce. Uh, it basically takes the same strain gauge that the planter uh, down pressure sensors use and they build a new, you've got this arm that holds the gauge wheel, they build a new arm that contains that strain gauge and then you got your uh, harnesses and they work with most of the modern monitors. And it's a pretty nice deal because to know what your down pressure is. It's expensive but it doesn't take very many planning mistakes to pay for that. Uh, really, I was telling him he needed more weights up until he bought the hydraulic system, and then it was like, well, you're fine, you don't need that. Even as hard and dry as it was last fall, I mean, the ground is like concrete. We're dusting weed in, but we're, it was always able to run two inches deep, even though it was just bone dry in, what, 15 plus years of no-till. Didn't have any trouble, except for the one with the spring. All the others are maintaining depth, so... You know, Alan was going to rig up. He was getting ready to put all these suitcase weights on here. And I was like, you know, with the hydraulics, I don't think you're going to need it. And you don't. From watching that spring by itself, this makes a lot of difference. And it's just, if you have a drill full of all the springs, you don't really notice it because they're all just working. You know you're going over tire tracks and everything else but when that one next to it is a hydraulic and it's staying right down in there and not chattering and Matt's right about conditions last fall anybody that was around here knows what the conditions were last fall but you got all your seeds in at two inches deep and so yeah. when it rained they all came up right at the same yeah, time and good. that extra inch is going to make a lot of difference and keeping the pressure on all the way over there's a drill at Clay Center this year. The guy bought it, uh, uh, bought the Unifor system for one rank to plant his soybeans. And he's got a lot of terraces. And before he always had these little triangular gaps and skips on the top of the terrace. And he says there's none of that now that he put the Unifors on. And I didn't know how big of a difference it would make in, in really mild conditions, but we had a drill in the Corn Belt outfitted with the Unifors this spring. And, the guy is just elated at his stands. He says they're so much more uniform than they ever were before. So I guess there's advantage to having exactly the right amount of pressure on all the openers.